Manchester is known as the music capital of the country. Manchester also created the world's first intercity railway. These men shared a dream that one day Liverpool and Manchester would be connected by railway. Moreover, it was at the heart of the industrial revolution producing the finest textiles that mankind has ever known. But despite this, Manchester worldwide is now known mainly for two things. The two great football clubs. The one right behind me, the great, historic, most popular football club in the world, Manchester United, and the one across town, Manchester City. But what if I told you there was a third Manchester club, a third Manchester club, that would attract the attention of the two behemoths in this city due to quickly growing and attracting very large crowds despite playing in the non-league, possibly endangering the future finances and fan bases of the two aforementioned established clubs. Let's go back to 1923 and discover the origins of this lesser known relic of a bygone era. At this time, Manchester United was located at its current location of West Manchester, whilst Manchester City would play their football in the east of the city at Hyde Road. On one fateful night on the 6th of November, however, the main stand of Hyde Road was set ablaze, and rather than it being the result of a bonfire or firework, the cause was believed to be a stray cigarette butt. But before we carry on with the story, behind these buildings on Hyde Road is where the old stadium of Manchester City, also known as Hyde Road, was located. And I'm not just waffling on about the old grounds of United and City for nothing, they're actually very relevant to the story of Central. It's all interwoven and stuff like that. So let's carry on with the story. Now off the main road is a load of these sort of roads with garages and other industrial places and as you make your way through this area without realising it you will come upon the actual location where the stadium was located behind these lots where people sell windows, the skips and all sorts of stuff where you can see that white bright light shining through is where new houses are being built and that is the actual location of the old city stadium. Now I would play this sort of music as it does look glorious with the bright white light shining through. But I'm a United fan, I can't glorify City's old stadium too much. Nah, that was just a joke. They do have a good history, they do. And now back onto the story once again. The main stand was destroyed, the club's dog Neil perished, and despite playing here, for a little while longer, the decision was finally made to move out of East Manchester. And although the stadium is known as Hyde Road, this is actually Bennett Street. It is a little bit odd that it's not on Hyde Road, despite it being called Hyde Road. But yeah, it's just a little bit off as you can see on this map. Not really a biggie to be honest, I just thought I'd point it out. This left East Manchester without a team, and the then director of Manchester City, John Ayrton, therefore thought it would be a good idea to utilise the Bellevue Stadium he owned nearby, which was otherwise empty apart from the weekly Speedway meeting to form another team in this part of Manchester. Manchester Central was quickly formed and would soon join non-league football. And despite playing in the non-leagues, Central was still able to attract some very big names. Billy Meredith, a Walsh international and a former player of both Manchester clubs would join as a coach. Bert Gray, another Walsh international but a current player, would join as a part of the playing staff and James McMahon would be named as the manager. And here we are at the original location where Manchester Central used to play. Or so you would think. Now when people come here to Kirkman Hume Lane in East Manchester, they may think this is the original speedway, but no, it's not. As you can see them houses in the distance, the original speedway is actually that way a little further along. So let's walk and talk a little bit more about Central. So Manchester Central would first take part in the Lancashire Combination League, but disappointingly, they would finish only 7th in their first season. Ayrton, however, was very ambitious and in the same year applied to get his team into the Football League. This, however, proved to be an extremely arduous task. See, at the time, the Football League was a close shop. The non-league and the Football League existed in two totally separate bubbles. Promotion and relegation between the two was not a possibility and there was only one way to get in via a vote. If the majority of the 92 clubs agreed, a new team would be let in, but since one team would then have to be kicked out of the league, any attempts for a new team to enter would quickly be squashed. Other clubs tried and failed, but Central, just like them, would soon meet the same fate. Things however would brighten in the next season, as Central would finish runners-up in the combination, but dark clouds would come over once again, as another attempt to get into the league would again soon be squashed. 
these dark clouds would prove to hinder performances as in the subsequent season they would again finish only 7th. Of course, the attempt to join the league again would fail, but this time it would sting even more as Chester, a club not very far from Central, were able to gain membership into the league instead. After continuing to trundle along for another few years, a golden opportunity would arise in October 1931 as Wigan Borough resigned from the league, and this time, surprisingly, their application was accepted. Oh happy days! And amongst these houses... are the sad remains of the old, original speedway where Manchester Central used to play their football. So yes, yes, it was happy days finally, but the happy days would not last for long as both City and United would hand in a formal complaint to the National League as they believed a third Manchester side would damage their attendances and therefore the finances of the two main Manchester clubs. And their belief was not unfounded as despite playing in the non-leagues, Central were able to attract very large crowds and if Central were able to nab some of the fans of both United and Manchester City, the finances of both of the main Manchester clubs would be massively affected. The league sided with the two Manchester stalwarts and again Central were unfortunately for them sent packing. Realising that their dreams would never come to fruition after meandering along in the non-leagues for another few years, Central would finally decide to back out of football altogether, the club would be disbanded and all the way back up to 2015, no one would hear from Manchester Central ever again. <laughs>